G'day everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now, I promise I won't milk this OSCP content much longer, but I've already had a quite a few questions asking me what I did between my first and second attempt, which made me score such a high mark and pass, as well as just some general reflection on how I would approach the OSCP again if I were to do it. Now, to take it straight back to when I started getting into security, and I'll try to keep this brief, so I've got a background in various different uh, disciplines in IT. So I've worked in development, uh, both uh, .NET and web, um, architecture, and lots of things in between. Um, so I already had quite a strong uh, foundation skills in IT. When I moved to security, my company made me do the EWPTX followed by the PTP in that order. Um, Maybe not the best path, but it was still a great learning experience and I highly enjoyed the PTP course. Um, and then obviously my OSCP where I did the three month pass, uh, failed first attempt and then passed the second with 100 points. So if I were to do all that again, starting from my point of moving into security, so I've already got some IT experience. With the benefit of hindsight and the services that are available to us now, I would probably have gone with something like starting off with Try Hack Me and do the offensive path in that. This will basically guide you through all the basics you need to know when it comes to um, leveraging your existing skill set into uh, penetration testing. Um, and they also have the web path as well, which would also be quite handy. I will definitely also pick up things from the essentials or foundations uh, path and just try to plug any potential knowledge gaps that I have. Um, a big thing here is don't let your ego get in the way if you think that you might not know something that well but have a general idea. It's probably a good idea just to research it a bit more and to study it and that will just fill up any knowledge gaps and make you much more stronger. So after I would have done the offensive path and just all these little modules on try hack me to fill in any knowledge gaps, I would then move to the offensive security proving grounds or OSPG and do the play machines of easy to intermediate difficulty. I found actually when I was doing these that these are generally a lot of fun um, and rarely did I feel like it was just grinding machine after machine with these ones. They are much easier but I still think that the process of that rote learning, so actually being on your own and doing machine after machine after machine completely unguided is just so valuable. And that's what I really uh, found quite valuable in the OSCP course. However, if you did the OSCP course straight away, you'd be a lot slower and it cost a lot more. So working in the proving grounds just gives you that environment where you can be a bit more free, you're not as time constrained as you would be if you picked up PWK pass and it gets you building that rote memory by doing machine after machine after machine. Then once I've done maybe about 20 to 30 machines and start to, starting to feel much more confident, I'll then enroll in the OSCP or the PWK and actually do the labs there. Because you've got that rote memory and you've got that experience and your methodology should be relatively good by now, I would just jump straight into the course and not worry about the exercises. The training quality of the PWK handbook is pretty subpar and the exercises are tedious and boring and not really well thought out. So I would have just skipped it all together and just not worried about the five points. Of course, it's easy to say that with hindsight that five points can be at that insurance policy, but honestly, I've really, really struggled to see it being worth it. Next up, when you're ready to book the exam, I would book this when your PWK pass is about to expire. I'd suggest maybe booking it no more than one week after your lab pass expires, as that just keeps you fresh in the zone, keeps you quite active, and lastly, this might be a little bit of a controversial opinion, but I wouldn't advise doing TJ Null's Hack the Box list. My reason for this is that Hack the Box tend to be focused a bit more on these niche kind of exploits and is a bit capture the flag-ish. So I don't see a great amount of value even with TJ Null's list. Um, instead, I would opt to do the Proving Grounds as these machines are built by offensive security themselves and they sort of have the same sort of flavor, if you will, to the PWK labs. 
fit the same molds. They're not the same par exploit path or anything like that, but they just feel the same, if that makes sense. So how long should you get the PWK lab pass for? Well, this really comes down to how much free time you have and how much you want to complete of the PWK. I got the three month pass and within two and a half months, I completed everything, uh, every lab machine and every exercise and every extra credit. And this was on an average of about 39 hours per week. If you weren't to do the lab exercises, then a two month lab pass should be more than sufficient. Now, just for some general tips to best prepare yourself and to iron in your methodology, um, these are some things that I just worked out as I was going and some things that I really wish I had done from the start. So firstly, when you're working on privilege escalation, I'd always recommend using Linux and Windows Ps and always saving that output to your local computer. And I'll get as to why in just a moment. It's a good idea to get into the habit of looting machines after you root them. So go through, you know, documents, downloads, desktops, uh, look at what programs are installed. All this is really handy just to really uh, pick up everything that you need because in PWK labs, everything is kind of interconnected and you might find clues for other machines. So don't be in too much of a rush just to hit the next machine. Take your time. Uh, go through it, see if you can uncover any clues because it will save you a lot of time later on. And whenever you're doing anything with to do with pivoting, I'd highly, highly recommend using SSH shuttle and learning how to use that properly. This just saved me so much time. Uh, one lab machine took me about 12 hours when doing double pivoting, while it would have been about a single hour should I have used SSH shuttle. But the benefit of that is that I did learn a lot from the stupid mistakes that I was making and I understand it much better. And my last point is just to do revision. As I mentioned in my previous video, we kind of get in the habit of doing machine after machine after machine without really taking into account time to read through our notes, read through all of our privilege escalation outputs to actually really take time to identify common uh, patterns, common processes, common themes in the machines. With, and this will really help you avoid rabbit holes in the future. Anyway, that's it from me for today uh, and probably my final OSCP video. I might do an exam prep guide if I see any particular value in there. If you have any questions on OSCP related material, let me know uh, as I might continue to do a couple of more videos. As for my next hacking history video, it is going to be delayed as I thought. Uh, I've just got this new camera, which I'm still learning how to use. And it's going to take a bit of time because I really want to put in a really high degree of production quality into these videos. Uh, I've got people coming in for interviews. I've already interviewed a number of high profile people for these videos. So stay tuned. They're going to be awesome. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.